Hey everybody, this week let's finish off our journey on JHS clones with the Angry Andy by Pedal PCB. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Before I get started, I just want to remind you to click the subscribe button down below and also sign up for notifications by clicking that bell icon. This week we're finishing off our three pedal journey on some pedal PCB clones of JHS pedals that clone Marshall amps. This week we're looking at the Angry Andy by Pedal PCB, which is a clone of a first generation Andy Timmons pedal by JHS. Last time we looked at the Angry Charles by Pedal PCB, and this week with the Angry Andy, you're gonna find a lot of similarities between those two pedals. Uh, the Angry Andy and the Angry Charles are looking to clone the JCM 800 style or Super Lead Amp from Marshall. So you're going to get a lot of the same configuration. This one just has the Andy Timmons fluctuations that he's put in there. Looking inside the pedal, you can see our green board here from Pedal PCB. That's the effects board, the Angry Andy effects board. I've also got a black pinout board here for my foot switch. And everything fits nicely into this 125B case. Again, I'm using top mounted audio jacks. These are the closed off audio jacks and a top mounted nine volt DC power supply input. Looking at the front of the pedal, we have four control knobs. We have our volume and gain, which are pretty standard. We have a single EQ knob and also an air control, which I like to think of as a presence. We also have a three way switch here, which uh, JHS is called headroom. It's actually just switching between diodes, clipping diodes on the inside but this is kind of said to be three modes, a 25 watt mode, a 50 watt mode, and a 100 watt mode. So, uh, you know, 100 watts gonna be in the middle. I think 25 is uh, up top, and if you push it all the way down, you're gonna get the 50 watt mode. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later, but I just wanted to explain that headroom switch. Quickly, just some additional details about the build. Um, everything fits in here perfectly. Uh, we have the drilling template like with every pedal PCB build and also for components This is probably the least amount of components between the Van Pelt drive the angry Charles and this angry Andy effects board um, Just one op amp here, which is an LM 833 I believe yep and uh, Standard capacitors the only thing that might be a little bit different is the addition of this three-way switch on the outside and the need for some BAT41 diodes, which may not be standard diodes that you have lying around. But more or less, a uh, small number of components only took about a half hour to build out the effects board. As I explained in the introduction, this pedal is going to be very similar to the Angry Charles by Pedal PCB. They're both trying to clone that JCM800 Super Lead Amp by Marshall, and that's why you're going to get very similar circuits. Um, to that, I think the best way to explain the similarities and the differences is to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the schematics. So I'm going to do something very similar that I did with the Angry Charles pedal uh, review that I did a couple weeks back. Hopefully you'll see all the differences and it'll help you decide on which pedal or effects board you want to pick if you're just going to limit yourself to one. So I've went ahead and downloaded the schematic for both the Angry Charles and Angry Andy. Uh, if you are familiar with my video from last week on the Angry Charles, you'll understand how this schematic works. I'm going to touch on it a little bit right now, but this is more to talk about the similarities between the two pedals. If you want a full deep dive into the Angry Charles, I would suggest to go back and look at my pedal PCB build on that specific effects board. So first, what we want to do is compare the power sections. So I'm just going to zoom in here on the power section for the Angry Charles, which is again on the left, and the same for the Angry Andy, which is on the right. So in both cases here, we can see very similar setup uh, off our nine volt supply here on the left on the Angry Charles and on the Angry Andy. We are first gonna go through an LED and a current limiting resistor, which in both case is 4K7 and then into one of the switches in our three-pole double throw foot switch. Uh, this is just basically to turn the LED on. Again, there's going to be a couple other switches assigned with these foot switches to uh, pass the uh, input from the guitar signal into the effects board. So essentially this is just showing that the effects board is on. It doesn't matter where you put this 4K7 resistor as long as it's in line, it's just limiting the current through this LED. 
We also have this Shockey diode in both schematics. This is just to ensure the polarity is hooked up correctly. So it's just a protection factor here. Uh, in both cases, it's the 1N5817. On both sides, we can see we have rails for our op amp packages. In the case of the Angry Andy, we are only using the LM833 op amps. Uh, in the Angry Charles, we have a TL072 as well. The capacitors, the 100 microfarads here and the 100 microfarad here, is essentially just to ensure that uh, this 9 volt supply actually stays relatively uh, stable. I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of this 100 nano uh, nanofarad capacitor is here. I, I'm not sure exactly why that's needed. Again, we have a voltage divider rule here with 22K resistors. It's the same in both schematic. Essentially what this is doing is just creating a reference voltage here of about half the supply. So if it's nine volts, it's going to be 4.5 volts, give or take, with the C101 here or the 100 microfarad capacitor just stabilizing that V reference voltage. Now the difference here between the Angry Charles and the Angry Andy is that you have this buffer using the other side of a TLO72 op amp package uh, feeding in to create the RF. This is nice to have. It's not needed uh, in the Angry Charles, and I assume that's why it was removed from the Angry Andy. I think it's also worth saying that the Angry Charles is based on a JHS build that's, I think, a version 4. This Angry Andy is based on a JHS build that's like a version 1 or 2. So if you look at a new Angry Andy, it might have this TLO72 buffer. Looking at the actual effects board, it's pretty much the same on the first stage between the Angry Andy and the Angry Charles. You have your guitar input, a one mag resistor to ground, which is just ensuring the uh, fidelity of the input signal by uh, making a large input impedance. You have some low pass filtering here, or sorry, high pass filtering here and low pass filtering here. You also have your VRAF through a one mag resistor to the input of your uh, LM833. So all this is doing is allowing the guitar signal to sit on top of that 4.5 volt DC bias uh, as it goes into your op amp. And this is just so your guitar signal is operating in the middle of this LM833's rails, which is between zero and nine volts. You have the same drive circuit in both sides here in the first stage, uh, essentially as this B100K, as we move more resistance into the feedback loop here, we're gonna get more drive in the signal. Um, that's pretty much all you need to know there. There's some tone stuff going on here with the 220 nanofarads and the 100 picofarads, but essentially the main thing here is just to know that as you bring this uh, resistance into the feedback loop, you're going to increase the gain. Moving right along to the next stage, in both cases we have another gain and tone stage. Again, it's using negative feedback here. Uh, we have a set gain stage, so this is the uh, 1 meg over 10k, that would be approximately what the gain is in volts per volt uh, on this LM833. Uh, again, we've used this 100 nanofarad to knock off that DC that was put in by VREF, and then we're adding, in, adding it in again here to just ensure that operating stability on the LM833 with the signal that's passing through. Into the next stage here, so we knock off the DC with the 2 micro 2 in both cases, and then we have uh, these clipping diodes. So this is one difference between the Angry Andy and the Angry Charles. The Angry Charles only has the red diode clipping here to ground, so it's hard clipping. With the Angry Andy, you have the option between the red clipping diodes, some BAT41 diodes clipping to ground, so you can choose those between the headroom toggle or you can take them right out and not have any clipping to ground here. So the way this is set up on the Angry Andy or the way it's kind of described, if you look at uh, the Andy Timmons pedal by JHS, is when you have no diodes clipping to ground, it's a 100 watt mode. If you have the red diodes clipping to ground, it's the 50 watt mode. And if you have the BAT41s clipping to ground, it's the 25 watt mode. Next, looking at the EQ, uh, essentially on the Angry Charles, we have the three band EQ where we separate out the different frequency spectrums and then adjust them all separately and add them back together with the TLO72. 
With the Angry Andy, it's a lot, lot more simplified. We just have a filter here that's adjustable using this C10K potentiometer value. You know, as we bring this over, we're going to uh, push more uh, high frequencies to ground here. So it's essentially just a low pass filter. Lastly, we have this air section, which doesn't exist on the Angry Charles. Uh, essentially, this is just another filter where we can send um, various amounts of high frequencies to ground based on where this air value is set. So the output of that is just going to be going through our volume. And again, our volume fluctuates between the output of the air section and ground. So very similar, I would say that if you uh, had your air option where two equals three, and you had your clipping diode set on the red LEDs, the two pedals should sound very, very similar. Now that's all based on whether your resistor tolerances are around the same, but more or less, those are the two main areas that you're going to, uh, you're going to see a difference in. So I hope you liked that comparison and you were able to see some of the similarities and differences. I think it really boils down for me to uh, whether you want the three band EQ or you want this uh, headroom switch. Uh, personally for me, I think I like the Angry Andes uh, range a little bit better. I don't really need a three band EQ. I find I can get along with just the uh, single knob EQ. And also I really like this headroom when it's set to 25, this headroom switch when it's set to 25. I'll put that up there and then crank the volume and I get a nice compressed distortion sound. So without further ado, let's plug this in and hear some sounds of the Angry Andy by Pedal PCB.
that's it for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed the demo of the Angry Andy. Uh, make sure to subscribe down below and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.